go. Great, right, so for our second talk we have um, Ethan Lee from Harmonic, and today he's going to give a presentation on um, introduction to spatial data and app. So I'll hand over to you. Yeah, thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ethan Lee. I'm a data scientist from Harmonic Analytics. Uh, most of my work are basically uh, specialized in data manipulation and data <coughs> visualization with some of the data an analysis. And they are all done in R, like in Alchemy. And then apart from that, I'm also doing a part-time research master in University of Auckland uh, in statistics. And uh, my topic is about like the cell genetic trees like uh, in statistics. And then it is also done in R. I have used R for around like three years. And my topics today is the introduction to spatial data in R. Uh, but however, like the spatial analysis in R is a very large topic, so it is basically almost impossible to like talk through everything like within 40 minutes. So in this talk, I will just like basically give everybody like a rough idea about like what spatial data is, and then what kind of like capability that R could do like in spa uh, spatial analysis, uh, especially in visualization. Okay, so before I actually start to talk about spatial. Uh, data. I'll probably give everybody like some idea about like data visualization, and then this will probably help me a little bit more when I explain some concepts later on. So, what is data visualization? Uh, it's just basically a method like to use like very various type of graphical entity to pr uh, project uh, data or information to a two D planar uh, or three D space. So, for example, like the example I've got <coughs> over here, it is like a scatter plot. Each point represents like an observation, and then with the corresponding x variable and the variable, they are the numeric variables. Um, if I want to like project more information, uh, I could use the size of the point to present one more numeric variables, and then like choose various uh, size of like the object to present like different uh, numbers. And then apart from that, I could also use different types of color to project. Uh, Different, uh, like, f uh, the to project the vector, vector variables onto the uh, graphics console as well, and then right now, like with just one plot, we could already like project like four set of variables. Apart from that, we could also use the degree of transparency to project one more numeric variable onto the graphic console. And then apart from just using point, we could also like connect all the points together into line like in the sequence so uh, for example like in graphics we could probably like see the lines as train or as row let's just use row as an example we could again use color like to present different rows and then we could use the line width to present let's say the row volume and then use uh, different line types to present uh, different types of row possibly and then uh, we could also use polygons uh, to present some geographical subject, let's say like a, a suburban. And then like within <coughs> the suburban, we could also use the color to present like some numerical, uh, numeric variables like population. And then we could move on to spatial visualization. Like, in terms of spatial visualization, we just like want to use the same method to use uh, various types of graphical entity to project the information geographically. So in this case, we will just like have a geographical reference, like as our background, and then like uh, we could do the same things. We could project this uh, information on onto the map. Let's say like we will project the population information through the polygons. And then, like, uh, like we have a set of polygons over here. Each polygon re represents one suburb, and then with like the degree of transparency or the darkness of the color to present like the population. And then, furthermore, like uh, I have a set of crime scenes data over here. I could use the points to present them. And then each point over here, like, uh, represent one crime scenes, and then each color of the points represents the type of the crimes, and then the size of the point represents the severity of the crimes. 
And furthermore, because we have so many graphical entities, we could like uh, include a legend to make the graphics more indicative. So this is a very standard like spatial visualization. Okay, let's look at a standard code to make some graphics like this. Um, like from the code console, like you can see that there are three objects, the Cumbria.map, Cumbria.shp, and the Crime.spdf. Let's not worry about like what data it is like in the console yet. They are just like some spatial data. Like as you can see by just looking at the code, the visualization, the spatial visualization is basically done by adding the information layer by layer. First, like we will plot our map onto the graphic console as a background, and then we will plot the population information with polygons on, on top of the map, and then we add the crime data onto the as the point onto the polygons, and lastly we add the legend. That's basically a very standard way to like do a spatial visualization. But like, can we conclude that like fish, uh, spatial visualization is very easy to do it? Okay. Uh, the answer is yes and no. Yes is like if you have some data, like in a very nice and clean form, and ready for the function, it is very easy. Visualization just like a plug and play process. You just insert your input data into the function, then you create the visualization. But no, it's because like most of the time, like the spatial data that we have is probably like incomplete. Uh, it means that we probably have lots of missing information like within the object, or the important information like the population and the color or something like that are not in the same source. And then like <coughs> you could probably need to like do lots of things to combine the, the spatial data together. And then, in order like to do, do those things, you, uh, I, I will need to like probably write a hundred lines of code to get a data ready for the the visualization. And then, like, if that is the case, like, so like when I see R, I'll say that like uh, from a analyst point of view, I'll say like most of the things that I do is actually data manipulation because like all the dirty work for the visualization or the modeling, you need to do just like input the data. So, um, like, take ggplot2 as an example. Like, I, I think like most of the people like in this room probably you probably use like ggplot2 before, right? And then like, have you guys thought about like why it is so popular? It's written by Hadley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one reason. <laughs> like, uh, first I will say like it provides like. A, a statistician or like a people doesn't really like know how to use like computer science language to make a very high end like visualization, but like um, so it provide a capability like for our users to create high end visualization. But apart from that, like from my point of view, I'll say like it is uh, kind of because the co-publishing like uh, data manipulation package, like Playa or Reshape or Reshape Two. I mean like. Uh, Yes, you, you have the capability to make a high end visualization, but without but like Hadley produced like those two packages to make you easily to change whatever the data you have into applic applicable data, and then you could just simply put them into a data visualization. And then like from this we could see that it is like almost like impossible to, to impossible to separate the, the data manipulation process and the data visualization process. So when I use R or learn a new package like in R, like most of the time I'll think of like three questions. First is like, do I have this function to do the analysis that I want to do? Second is like, can I trust it? Because the open source like language, like there are lots of things that like is contributed by some unknown people. And then if they are all okay, the last question is like, how I could use the function? And then this bring up to like two questions, because like, all the dirty work, like the visualization or the modeling, they are all done by those like package author. We like so when we are used, when think about like, like how we could use this function, it's more like first like what does the input data look like, and second is like how could I turn my data into this input data, and this bring up my topic today. That's 
like why we would like to know about like what a, a spatial data is before you want to do a spatial analysis or spatial visualization, and then you have to know how to manipulate them. So, what's spatial data? Spatial data like consists uh, it, it consists of like three components. First is the unique ID. Each ID represents one spatial entity. You can see them as like a geographical objects. Uh, for example, like New Zealand is a, a spatial entity. China is another spatial entity. And then, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have the geometry information, which consists of the coordinates. So with the coordinate, we could locate the uh, spatial entity onto a map. And then we need, uh, it is like a geographical measurement. And then we have the CRS, the coordinate reference system. It is like a, me a geographical measurement system for the coordinate. And lastly, we have the attribute data. It, it, sh it is just basically the normal data we know, uh, we use to like do, uh, manipulate or visualize. But like, yeah. And then this is like the component of spatial data. If you think this way, then like spatial data is just like has one more column, which is the ge 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 geometry information. Let's look at some actual example. Like, this is a standard spatial point data. Uh, it is like a crime data, like in Cumbria, in uh, Europe. And then like, over here, each row represents one crime scene. And then we have five uh, columns, five variables. First is the ID, the crime ID. You can also see that as like the spatial <coughs> points ID. And then we have the east thing and north thing. That's the coordinate for the uh, for the uh, crime. And then we have the type of crimes and the severity of the crimes. They are the like uh, they are the attribute data. This just like look exactly the same as the normal data that we have. Like uh, the coordinate, just like another numerical variables. But let's look at uh, standard spatial polygons data frame. If you look at this data frame over here, again, we have like, um, this is like um, Cumbria map data. So uh, it is like a polygon. Each polygon represents a sovereign in Cumbria. And then if you think it this way, the names over here, the barrel central is a sovereign of like uh, Cumbria. This is like the ID of like the uh, spatial polygon, spatial entity. But uh, I'll see that as like one uh, the attribute data as well. My actual data is, is in the left hand side. This is like a numerical like spatial ID. And then again we have the coordinates, the longitude and latitude. And then we have three set of like attribute data. But this time, because polygon is a set of points instead of just one point, and then we just connect those points like in a special order and then to form an enclosed line. So like if that is the case, for one spatial entity like each of them will actually contain more than one rows because we have more than one point. And then like for example, if I just do a search for barrel central for one spatial entity, we will find that like for, for this particular spatial entity over here, we will have like 65 rows that they are related to the polygons, the suburb. And then we will find one thing because like, um, we just have one spatial entity over here, but like for the attribute data, the only informative row is just like the call in the first row and the name and the population. All the others are just like the duplication. But in order to keep the structure over here, we have to like uh, duplicate all those like attribute data. This is not good, like uh, like when we are like use manipulate data in R, because like. When we are doing spatial visualization or analysis, like you probably like want to do something all around the globe. In that case, you probably have a very large number of like spatial entity, and then like you have a very large size of data, and the duplication of the attribute data will have a very large side effect, especially in the size of the data. So, in this case, so the data frame might not be a very good format to store the spatial data. We will need something special to store them, and then. This is the vector data. Like in R, this like this type of data is provided by a package called SP. It is introduced to R like in 2004. 
And this package provides like the basic classes like for the vector data. Basically, it's just like the different types of like spatial entity. We have our points, the lines, it's just like we connect all the points in sequence. And then we have the polygons, we connect the point in like a special order and then to, to form an enclosed line. And then we have our grid. The good things about like the vector data is that like they actually separate the geometry and the attribute data for each spatial entity. This means that we don't need to duplicate the attribute data like to keep the structure of the data frame. And then this will greatly reduce the size of the data that we have. And then the other thing is like for this uh, object, it includes like the coordinate reference system. Like in the previous like slide, you can see that this coordinate reference system is not attached with the data frame, the object itself. And then it means that if you know the coordinate reference system for the data set, you know it. If you don't have it, you will never have it. And then in that case, you will probably never like could plot your points or your spatial points or your spatial entity onto any map because you don't know what this uh, reference system is. You could just try your luck to plot on like different types of map. But uh, there are lots like uh, coordinate reference systems, so I highly doubt that like it is very hard to do it. And then. Lastly, uh, because of this package, it provides the foundation of the spatial analysis in R. Because like lots of like functionality are built on this type of uh, data, data set. So let's look at the structure of the spatial classes. Uh, again, we will have like three components over here. First, we will have our foundation class. It is the spatial object. It contains the coordinate reference system and the bounding box. It's basically the information of the the spatial system. And then second, we have uh, the geometry class. It contains a spatial ID and a coordinate. We call them spatial points object, spatial lines object, or spatial polygons object. And then we have our extended class, where we introduce like our attribute data into the spatial object, which is the spatial point data frame, and etc. This is basically this is just exactly look at like the same as like the spatial data that I just showed to you with those three components. But for vector data, like they construct them like in the S4 list objects. So let's look at a real example. Like this is a spatial polygon data frame. It is like the Cumbria map, but not in the data frame format, but the spatial object format, the vector data. So uh, what I do first, I will load a shapefile into R. Shapefile is just like an external file format that contains all the spatial data. And then I save them, I assign them like into object called cumbria.shpdf. And then if I do a structure print on this object, we will find the output prints over here for the object. We have like five components. First is the data. Uh, this is just basically the data frame for the attribute data, and we have 46 observation. It basically means that we have like 46 <coughs> spatial entity. Uh, in our case, it will be like 46 suburb. And then we have like a list of 46 polygons. This is the information of the geometry. And then we have, we have the plot order. That's just part of the geometry information. And then we have the bounding box and the PRJ for string, and that's like the the coordinate reference system, but like it is like in a spe special spe uh, spe specification. However, like if we just look at the output over here, it's quite hard to understand if you've just like you are a beginner like to spatial objects because we have too much information. Let's make that into a more understandable format. What we could do is just like reduce the amount of information. So instead of just looking at the whole spatial polygon data frame. Like we will look at one component of it like each time. So the graphics at the right hand side is basically the complete spatial polygon data frame. If we just plot it, it will become a map. And then like uh, there are lots of like spatial entity, like within in our case will be 46, like within this like complete spatial objects. And then for example, this is one of them. Uh, just with barrel central. We could just to see more. For example, lay in shot. As you can see that like this is just like another part of like the spatial polygon data frame. And when we like have this like graphic core meanings, then we could move on to how we could like actually use those information to project a plot like this. First, 
a spatial object will have like the spatial ID. Like in our case, it is just the name of the server. And then we will have like the attribute data. And then we have like the ID again. This is just like a suburban call and then the name and the population of the corresponding uh, suburb. And then we will have our coordinate reference system in the PROJ4 specification, just like a way to describe the coordinate reference system. And then we have the bounding box, the boundary for the map that we will like visualize on. And then lastly is the coordinates, the, the, geometry, uh, the geometry information. So this is basically, we can see that like in spatial object, everything is like stored in the components and then they all store like in the list objects. And then the good things about this is like, for example, because like in the list, like different components could have like different types of type, types of objects. So, um, for example, the attribute data would not be like duplicates to just to to keep the structure of the data frame. And this will greatly reduce the size of the uh, spatial data. But uh, sometimes, like for some people, it might be harder to understand like a list object then we could actually see them as like a data frame. Like each spatial entity just represents one uh, row in our data frame. And then we have our geometry information, the coordinate. However, but like, it's not like a row anymore. It's just not a cell, but a set of like points. But we can see them as a cell. And then we have the coordinate reference system and then the attribute data. And then for a spatial entity, it could be like a set of graphical entities. For example, if we see New Zealand as like one spatial entity, because like New Zealand got like two island, the North Island and the South Island, and then we will have like two spatial, uh, two graphical entity. It could be one or it could be a set of them. And then in this case, like when we actually try to manipulate the data, we are actually doing the same things, but just with a little bit like different syntax. So let's, uh, up to now I think like, most of us who have like a basic concept about like what spatial object is. Let's just try to like create ob uh, objects together. So like in spatial point family, we have like three set of class. One is the spatial, spatial points and spatial points data frame. If we just look at spatial, it has like the component that is the bounding box as a matrix and then the CIS specification. And then if we move to like uh, extended class, we will have like the coordinate included. And then lastly, we will introduce like a data frame into the spatial objects. So basically in order to construct a spatial point objects, what we need to do is just like construct the spatial objects and then include the coordinate into spatial objects. And then lastly, include the attribute data into the spatial point objects. Here is the example. So firstly, I will load a uh, crime data like in Cumbria as a data frame format into R. Like over here, we got uh, five variables again. Like first is the ID, and then the geometry and the attribute data. Uh, first, like I'll probably like, not do it in that particular order, but like I just like what we need to have right now is just like three things: attribute data coordinate and the CRS. So that's what, uh, what we are doing right now. First, I'll extract the, co uh, the coordinate from the data frame. And then like in spatial objects, like um, because they are all stored in a list format, when, when we like try to project, uh, to plot this object onto a graphic console, we probably need to like include the attribute data. And then they, uh, the geometry and attribute data are actually connected by the row names of the matrix and the uh, attribute data. So we need to assign the original spatial ID into our uh, row names of the coordinate matrix. So basically, this is one component node. And then the next is just like to construct the attribute data in the same way. And lastly, we will construct the CRS object with the PLJ4 specification. And then the last step, we will like put everything together into a function called spatial point data frame. Basically, this is just like a, a function to create spatial objects. And then uh, we will have the match.id equal to true. It means that we actually have the spatial ID within our components. And then they could use that row names 
to connect them together. And then we will have like a spatial point data frame object. Again, it is quite similar to the one that I just showed you before. We have the data, we have the coordinates, we have the CIS. And then when this data is ready, what we need to do is just like ap apply a plot function onto the object and then you could create your points. If you want to have some fancy features, you just need to like include, for example, your attribute data, the type of the crime as the, co uh, the color, and then the uh, severity of the crime as the size of the point, then you could have like uh, a spatial entities like this. Uh, by just looking at the spatial point object, you might probably can't s you, you probably can't see like the advantage of like the spatial object because like basically it is just basically uh, it is just the same as like the data frame. Uh, for one point, they have like one coordinate, one set of coordinate, and then one row of like attribute data. But if we move on to a line object, you probably like see more. Like line object is like relatively complicated. Let's say like we have a set of points over here. Line object is just like we connect all the points together by using a line. But the way that we connect the lines, uh, the, the line is like very important. For example, if we group them, like group the point into two, and then like with the same point, we could actually create some different like graphical representation. representation. So uh, in this case, we will need to have a few more class instead of just like the spatial point or spatial data frame. We, we need to have two more. One is the line objects and the lines object. Line object is just like the objects to uh, store the graphical entity, the, the coordinate of the graphical entity. And then the lines object is just like to group up like the same type of like graphical entity into one be to become a spatial entity. For example, like you could see like uh, there are let's say 100 of rows like in Wellington and then like there are uh, motorway primary rows or uh, state highway or something like that and then like first we need to like separate the coordinate into appropriate uh, components and then we assign those like coordinate into a line object to become a graphical entity and then we assign the same type of rows into one let's say like probably there are 15 uh, motorway like in Wellington and then we want to assign all those same type of rows into one object and then we'll create the lines object and then lastly we just like put the lines object into spatial lines object and then we introduce like the CIS into the set of object and lastly we will introduce like an attribute data into this spatial object and then to create a complete spatial lines data frame here's, a, uh, here's an example so again, firstly, we will load the CSV file into R. Uh, we have five columns, like uh, one is the ID, and then the, co uh, the coordinates, and then attribute data. First, we need to like separate the, the data frame into uh, appropriate graphical objects. So we, uh, I'll separate the data by using the ID, split over here. And now turn like the data frame into lists with like different components. Each component represent one graphical entity. And then the next, I just need to assign those like uh, coordinates from each of the components into a lines object by using the line function. But over here, because like we have a list, we have to vectorize the whole process. And then we will have a set of like uh, lines object stored in the list. The next, we need to like put them together, like into the same group. So we need to do a group up. I'll extract the type because, like, uh, in my case, I'll see like type as like my spatial entity. So I will use type and the uh, ID to do a unique to get a metadata, and then I split the metadata into a list and then I calculate how many rows for each type of rows. <coughs> so it's more like how many graphical entity for one for each set of spatial entity. So here's the output. We got like three thousand and four hundred and eighty six rows and then they will be grouped up into the following groups. And then the next uh, if I print them like they will be like in this format. So 
Uh, right now, I have the group up metadata. I just need to apply this metadata onto my uh, lines object, and then I could create the lines object. I use the follow over here. So like uh, I'll extract like each of the types of component and then extract the corresponding like rows ID and then to put them together. And then if I do a print, we can see that like the same type of rows are all grouped up together as a list and there each of them are line objects. And then the next is to uh, put those lines, spatial lines of uh, those lines object into a spatial line. And then we could like introduce the CIS to those objects, and then this will be we will make like the spatial data more meaningful in this case. Here's just another function, M apply, uh, because we have to do like things parallelly. We need to assign the lines component, and then uh, but also the names of the as the ID. And then if we print it, we'll find that we have like eleven set of like lines objects. And then the next is just introduce like the CIS specification into the lines object, and then to create the spatial lines object. And lastly, we introduce like a attribute data into the spatial lines object to create the final product, the spatial lines data frame. So, like the process is basically this quite similar to spatial points, but because like everything's like we have uh, multiple points for each spatial entity. And then we need to do a group up. Then, like the whole process, you need to factorize it instead of like just like in, insert your data or your input data into the function. And and then this is like a hard part. I would say like for manipulating the the spatial data. And then if we if we apply the plot function onto the lines object, we will like create a lines uh, a, a row network like this. And then if you want more, you could just simply use like the attribute data, uh, the colors and the width to present more meaningful role visualization. <coughs> so, yep, as you can see, like this is basically the way that you could create a complete spatial object. As long as you have the, 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 the spatial object, then the next thing you need to do is just like apply a <coughs> visualization function onto this object and then you could like do whatever you want. And then like we have like a set of methods that you can manipulate the spatial objects. But like they are just basically very similar to like the data frame. You could do a subsetting because it, because it is like in the list object you, uh, and then it is uh, as for this. So you could use the add uh, operator to extract the slots and then within each slot it could be like a S3 list and then you could just use the dollar sign to extract the S3 list. Or like there are some convenient function you could just simply see the uh, spatial object as the data frame that I just showed you and then to use like a standard uh, data frame uh, operator to extract the column and the rows. And then like when you do that, like you will simply extract the spatial entity from the spatial object. And then uh, you could you also have like the combination for spatial object. This is more like the R by combine the row together. It could be like different ID. You just like are buying like two spatial entities together, like New Zealand and China, put them together to become like one spatial object. And you could like have uh, the are buying like with the same spatial ID. For example, like you have like three three suburb: Barrow Central, Barrow West, and Barrow East. Instead of like having three spatial uh, entity, you want to have one. And then what you need to do is just extract the coordinate and then put them together and then put it back into the spatial object. And then you have the merging. This is like just like the column buying and uh, spatial aggregation. This is like a little bit different like in compared to normal aggregation. Instead of like just like aggregates like the, the numeric variables based on the factor variables, we aggregate the numeric variables, uh, numeric variables, variables based on the spatial entity. For example, uh, I have a set of polygons, a suburb, and then I have a set of like crime scenes. Instead of like presenting the crimes in a, po uh, in a point entity, I could aggregate all the points into polygons and then in this case, uh, in each polygon, I would have a data frame that has the counts of the crime. And then I could use the counts to, pre uh, like I could present the crime as a spatial polygon instead of points, and then with the color to represent the counts. And then uh, we'll have the spatial transformation, basically just like transform one spatial object from one particular CRS to another one. So that like sometimes you could like plot two spatial objects together. 
And then sometimes you will probably want to like convert spatial object into data frame as well, because like in ggplot, it takes data frame instead of like the spatial object. So if you want to use ggplot two, and then you you will need to like convert that into data frame, and then you will calculate the path distance, uh, path distance like between lines, or like calculate the area of the polygons. So this is basically like a rough idea about like the spatial data and the spatial uh, data manipulation. When you know those, what you need to do is just like apply them with a plotting function. And then here is like some showcase of the capability that I could do uh, in visualization. So in the plot over here, this is just like a Cumbria map. And then each point represent a crime again. And then each type of color uh, represent the type of crimes. And then the size of point represent the severity. And then we have the legend. We could see the distribution of the crime. However, if because like we have like around like four thousand points, it might be it might be hard sometimes to actually to see the distribution accurately. For example, like over here we have two clusters. If we show them as the point shape, it might be very hard to like compare them like to see or oh, which is more condensed one. And then what you could do is just like turn them into density plot. It is not hard. What you need to do is just like convert your spatial point data frame into uh, into a PPP object, and then turn that PPP object into density, and then plot them. So if you have a good spatial point data frame, like what you need to do this is just like a few more steps to create density. And then sometimes you could also incorporate like more graphical entities to present a more meaningful map. For example, like uh, I could like projects the population into the map so that uh, we could start to ask some question like is the uh, number of crimes related to the number of population within a specific suburb and then you could probably see some relationship like from the, from this type of like visualization and then like furthermore like you could like just like incorporate everything so you, that you have and into one map and then present them as like different types of graphical entities like the one over here but everything like got a balance. If you go over that balance point, you will have just like way too much information in one plot, and then sometimes you just can't see anything from it. And then, so when we are doing visualization, it's really important that like we find that balance point. We project the reasonable amount of information that we want, but like it will not be go over, and then that will get to the point that we can't see anything. Uh, one way to do it is just like. Uh, present them like in different panels, like in this like plot over here. Instead of like present the the type of crime scenes in different color, we could present them like in different panels, and then we keep the same amount of information. But like in each panel, you will reduce the amount of graphical entity into a reasonable form that you could understand. And um, in spatial like plot, uh, like spatial data, like what. If you want to create a plot like this, you just need to use the SP plot. Again, it's very straightforward. And then sometimes because like you have lots of points, like even though like we reduce them into reasonable amounts of them, but sometimes it's still quite hard to understand. Then we could just use the way that I just mentioned, like use the spatial aggregation to aggregate all the points into polygons, and then to present them as a uh, as a color of the polygons. And then we could like assign some text objects onto this map. You will s actually see the crime distribution more clearly. And then this is just like use a over function to aggregate the point into polygons, and then we plot them. And if you have like time series data, and then uh, the next you could do is just like to incorporate your time series data and then to present a plot that I just showed you and then incorporate them with an animation and then you will see like the official official like the crime distribution across the time and lastly you could also like use some interactive graphics to present like your information because like previously like they are all static plots in order to un understand like a data set like in a reasonably good le uh, degree and then you probably need to like visualize like several of them first you probably want to have a big picture and then the next you probably want to have some details information 
but if you could like visualize them in the interactive graphics, you could just basically like move, like look at the big pictures, like at a reasonably far away size, and then like if you want, you could just get into the plot. And then you could also have the two to, to show you like each types, uh, the count for each types of crime. This is more accurate in compared to just look at the points. So yeah, this is basically like uh, what you could do like with basic like spatial visualization and basic spatial manipulation in R. Thank you. How do you map your um, geometric data with the background map? So you have a background map, like the, like the picture, right? Yes. Yeah, the background map. And then how do you match uh, what you create, the object, to yep. the actual map? Oh, so like for example, uh, the data that you mentioned is like a spatial data, right? Yes. You have the coordinates. Yes. And then you know the coordinate reference system, right? Yes. Uh, so what you, need, what you need to do is just extract the bounding box from the spatial objects. And then there are some functions that you could download a map from the internet, like okay. Juju Map or okay. like OpenStreetMap. Okay. And then you just like applying the the bounding box into those functions with the coordinate reference system. You yeah. could like download the map that you want. And then the next you want to do is just like plot the map and then plot your points. So have to follow the um, the refer re referencing system. Yes, that's like the key to like combine the spatial object together. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. So you just have to make sure that your bounding box box coordinates are exactly the same, otherwise it will be shifted and not in the right uh, place. It's not necessary to be the same. I mean like for the map, like if you have a very large bounding box, like you probably look at like the, the map like from a very like far away level. And then when you visualize those points on those maps, you probably can't see anything. It's really small. So the the idea of ha uh, having like bounding box is just like to visualize the things in a reasonable like level. How much um, of the code for that last slide with the interactive map is oh. R and how much is but not R? Um, I'll say like 60% of those code are from JavaScript and then 40% are from uh, R. Um, so like first, uh, like I used the leaflet as my JavaScript package and then I used um, R charts. So what you need to do is more like I use R chart to convert my R data frame, all the spatial data into a geo JSON, and then I put those like data into the JavaScript that I write. Uh, with like an interactive graph like that, it's not that much to be honest. Like for the JavaScript, if you know how to do it, yeah. And then like there are lots of like interactive graphics like in R at, at right now. So like you probably don't need to write them if you don't want to have like those highly customization like graphics. Mm -hmm. You could just simply use like page like Google Biz or R charts and then like they have also a template. What you need to do is just apply the data. If you want to do fine tuning or very graphical design of a poly plot, can you still use uh, the plot or ST plot to get the details correct or do you need to go to DD plot to get font size and line thickness and everything if you want to fiddle with small details? How do you do normally? Uh, for final design, both of them you could you could do that. Like for SP plot, like SP plot and GPlot plot are, are quite similar. But SP plot is just like written in a very hard way. Like you have to assign each first. Like SP plot is more like you see each graphic code entity that I show you as an object, and then you plot them one by one, and then they all store in less objects. So what you need to do to to put those like details thing, you just like assign them as an object. You create, you probably have a picture or graphics and then you just like uh, assign that into a particular function in SP, SP plot, like uh, the, grid, uh, the grid visualization function and then with the right coordinate and then put that into that list and then you could create those like details. But like in ggplot, like they have like all sorts of like convenient function. So you just need to like add that particular function with like right argument into the the juju plot like uh, syntax and then you could create those things. So imagine if I was the head of police of Cumbria mm -hmm. and I wanted to know how 
policing in one of the suburbs affects crime in that suburb, but also how it affects crime in neighbouring suburbs. So if I wanted to test something about spillover effects. Can you use this package or similar ones to build a measure of how well um, how well associated or how, right, right, how okay. closely associated the different suburbs uh, are? True, like, no, some, like, so, uh, summer statistic like that. You, it's pretty hard to, like, do officially because, like, you don't have, like, exact figures. Yeah. Like, and then there are some, like, uh, spatial package in R that you could, like, apply some spatial modeling mm -hmm. and then to see, like, the correlation, like, between, like, geographically. Yeah. Why Cumbria? Hmm? Why Cumbria? <laughs> oh, because this is like the only public like data that I could find which is really complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah. To solve the, the yeah, yeah. get the data problem. Yeah. That's Duncan for some local data. Anything else? All right, thanks, Ethan. Okay, thank you. our meeting today and before you go I'd like to mention that um, David Lillis who um, presented last time so he's actually published a book called Our Graph Essentials which is um, available on Amazon I think so uh, if you're interested um, check it out yeah. thank you very much for coming along guys and uh, we're gonna head over to the pub uh, for a quick drink so uh, Please feel free to come if, uh, if you if you wish to. Are we going to Royal? Yep, don't we? So, so, yeah.